she's a headlights writer. How to battle the new shiny idea syndrome. That's literally your job as a writer. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I wanted to talk about some lessons or like tips and tricks I learned about writing while I was attending a book festival recently. <sighs> the North Texas Teen Book Festival to be more specific. Now I'm a huge fan of book festivals just in general. I think this is like the third or fourth one that I've attended with my brother David. He has been in videos before. <laughs> because really it's like what more could a book nerd want? You got your books, you're surrounded by bookish people, you got fun bookish merch, and you have author talks. I think it's always just so incredibly cool to hear your favorite authors talk about books that you love. From like just a reader perspective it gives you so much more depth about the world and you learn more little details about the characters and you can find out about potential sequels or prequels or like any other stories that this author has in the works. But from a writer perspective... <laughs> so that's what I want to get into today. Looking at book conventions or book festivals from the writer perspective and what you can learn from them. Now the first point I want to touch on isn't exactly a lesson learned per se but it's more just like the overarching feeling you get and that's that it's just so inspiring. Like here are these people doing the thing you want to do. Publish a book, publish multiple books, sitting in front of you talking about their experience. <sighs> All of us have to imagine at some point us sitting on the other side of that table talking about our novels. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so in that way it's really like the icing on this all-encompassing bookish cake. I don't know why I keep trying to make analogies work. None of my analogies ever work. <laughs> but I'm going to be talking specifically about the North Texas Teen Book Festival 2019, the things I learned this time because I learned so much every single time. So lesson one was about how to battle the new shiny idea syndrome and my goodness. This is a question I've been asked a lot, especially as someone who likes to kind of juggle multiple projects at once, but it's also something that I personally struggle with. Before this moment I did not have a good answer. While Samoya Dayud had her own uh, her own perfect way of dealing with this and I am going to steal it. Also she was an incredible speaker. She was so charismatic, so funny. She loves Lord of the Rings. <laughs> she was amazing. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Her hack for this is that you take the shiny new idea that you have and you force yourself to write a three-page synopsis for that idea. So rather than like trying to force yourself to ignore it, even though your brain's always kind of there, you know, that's the problem with the shiny new idea is that part of your brain, no matter how much it should be working on this thing, is always right over here. So just lean in and lean so far in that you're gonna write a three-page synopsis for it. By the time she's done with that three-page synopsis she is so excited to go back to novel writing or editing or revising this story. It feels so much easier, you're more excited for it, you're like Ugh. And I think this is personally gonna work for me because one you get to kind of scratch that itch of the new shiny idea. Again you're leaning into it and then two because like she alluded writing a synopsis is hard and not fun. And to write a three-page one I went just, I know I'd abandon it halfway through and be like, my old story, I love you. And then of course once you're done with this project that you should have been working on and you're ready to go back to the new shiny idea, you already have a three-page synopsis for it. You already have some of it worked out. Best of both worlds y'all. So lesson number two is actually more of a reminder and it's that we all write differently. And I think AuthorTube does a really good job of showing that but I love panel discussions for the fact that everyone sitting up there has more or less gotten their way into publishing a similar way. Most of the people, at least at this kind of thing, are all traditionally published. They're all traditionally published in young adults. So that part's the same and yet the way of writing the book, the way of revising the book, the way of editing the book is so different person to person even though the outcome is this young adult novel that we can buy in Barnes and Noble, you know? Well at the Whole New World panel they really talked about this and dove a little bit more in depth. The whole point of that discussion was centered around world building and creating these fantastical places and things and creatures and whatever, you know? And so it was funny hearing how many of them were such planners and had a lot of things kind of minutely figured out before they started writing and almost all of them were over writers so they included more information in the book that eventually had to be cut out except for Stephanie Garber of the Caraval series who like me is constantly told that she needs to fill more in so I just think that's a fun way of seeing how everyone writes differently and how they all managed to have these incredible worlds and got to them in different ways. There was also a really funny moment 
moment on that panel where Stephanie was talking about how she has a hard time filling stuff in after the fact even because it's like she doesn't know what she doesn't know. Like if she doesn't know it how is she supposed to put it in? And Alex London is like that's literally your job as a writer. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming up with it. <laughs> and lesson number three, I think to that end, I learned a new phrase that I really, really love from Danielle Clayton. Now she is an she plans so much. She plots stuff so differently from me, but I really liked her terminology when she said that she's a headlights writer, meaning that she basically can only see so far in front of her, in front of the story. And boy, oh boy, do I feel that, especially for Project Death, my Camden arrival story. It's like the more I write, the more I know, and I'm kind of like inchworming my way across the timeline. <laughs> But I can't see the very end. I actually can't even see like the 80% of the way mark because I'm only at the 25% right now. So I love it. I'm now happy to say that at least for this project, I'm also a headlights writer. <laughs> and now the fourth lesson, my final main lesson was actually a story related lesson personal to me. You know when you know something, but you got to hear it to like make sure that you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was at that same panel. This was such a good panel, y'all. Oh my gosh, it was the last panel David and I went to, but it was so good. <laughs> it was at that panel where they were answering a question about how you put in backstory and, you know, world building, because it was all about world building, <laughs> obviously, a whole new world. And one of them mentioned oral history. And now for my Camp Nanorama project, in my brain, there's a ton of oral history that's shared and passed down. And that's like a main way they kind of spend their time. And I even have this place called The Sticks that they share the stories that people perform this oral history but I never figured out a way like it didn't cross my mind because I'm a dummy to show it in the book but listening to that interaction and someone whoever it was I can't remember now answering that question and mention oral history I was like oh I had two scenes pop into my head scenes that like theoretically I knew were there I just didn't know how I could put them in my book but now I got it now I got it. <laughs> so anyways, yay, those two scenes are really gonna help not just the plot but the world building and that's something that I struggle with and something that I think I'm getting better with in this novel. So all around, great things you guys. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I have some book lessons of sorts or like kind of things that I'm bookmarking for future research because I met with the wonderful Jade from Bedtime Book Word. We went to this Argentinian bakery and we talked and we ate and we had fun and she told me about Scribed and I relearned or heard again about the greatness that is the Priory of the Orange Tree. So please everyone do comment down below and let me know if you use Scribed or if you have already read Priory of the Orange Tree or anything by Samantha Shannon. And then finally please also comment down below. Let me know if you've attended a book festival before either as just like a reader or like a guest is that what they call them or if you were actually like a speaker if you got to be on a panel I would love to hear about it thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon for the video bye Ooh. make sure I got the author right hello <laughs>